So I've got an opportunity for you. How do you like some free money? Whether you're betting, trading, investing, doing anything, the idea of free money sounds very appealing. And it occurs on with an amazing regularity on betting exchanges. You don't see this sort of opportunity with a bookmaker or a sports book because betting exchanges fundamentally work in a different manner. But they very often create the situation where it appears that free money is available to you. It's gonna happen the weekend of recording this video. I can already tell you where it's gonna happen and how. But the most important thing about this video is to get an understanding of exactly why the situation occurs, what the deal is, whether there really is free money, and what you can do about it. So let's explore that in this video. If you're interested in trading with BetAngel, then visit our website where you can download a free trial of BetAngel Professional and BetAngel Trader. If you want to learn how to use them, then visit the Academy where we give you a detailed, structured walkthrough of each product. And if you're an existing user, then head on over to the forum where we have a load of files for you to download to customise and use within BetAngel. Now, the important thing to understand with betting exchanges is that you can back and lay. You're under no obligation to take the current price. You can actually offer a price to the market. You can back at the current lay price. You could lay at a price that isn't there and you just wait for it to get matched within the market. There are a whole load of ways in which you can interact within the market. But the important thing to understand, and a lot of people never really truly get to grips with this, is exactly what is the market that you're looking at. When you look at a set of odds within a betting market, we will take an example of a football match because that's an easy one to understand. You get a set of odds within the market um, and that sort of, you know, what is, what is that actually telling you? Well, each one of those odds is basically telling you the chance that something has of going on to win that particular event. So in the case of football, we'll have three sets of odds. One will be for the home win, one will be for the away win, and one will be for the draw. The match must end with a home win, an away win, or a draw. So when you look at the odds within that particular market, each one of those odds represents the chance of that happening. If you do a quick calculation of one divided by the odds, that will actually give you a percentage. And if you add up all of those percentages on either the back or the lay side, you end up with a thing called a book percentage. And that book percentage represents the chance of any of one of those things occurring. So in the chance of football, you could be a home win, an away win or a draw. What's the chance of a home win, an away win or a draw within a football match? It's 100%. And if you actually go in to Betfair or your preferred exchange, you can actually display a thing called the book percentage. And what the book percentage is doing is it's actually measuring all of those odds. In the case of a football match, there's a 100% chance of three situations occurring. In a 10 runner uh, horse racing market, then one of those 10 horses is going to win, you know, foregoing complexity. Uh, so all of the odds represent the individual chance of something going on to win a particular event. And if you do all of those calculations, you end up with the book percentage. Now, the interesting thing is the book percentage is always slightly above or below 100%, because if you could back everything in the market below 100%, you're basically buying the chance of something definitely occurring for less than 100%. So you'll always find that the book percentage on the back side is slightly higher than 100%. And if you go to the lay side for the opposite reason, you'll always find that the lay percentage is slightly lower. And as a consequence, the reason that you've got these two and the difference between the two is basically the spread, the difference in odds between the back and lay prices within the market. Basically, it has to be this way because otherwise you could back everything below 100% and make a guaranteed profit, or you could lay everything above 100% and make a guaranteed profit. And obviously that makes no sense. So as a consequence, the market tends to gravitate near to 100%, but it will be slightly over or under depending upon whether you're on the back or the lay side. If the situation occurs where that's not the case, for example, the back side is showing a book percentage of 95%, that means that in theory, you could back the entire book and make a guaranteed 5%. The chance of a home win, an away win, or a draw in a football match is 100%. You can buy it at 95%. You walk away with 5% free money. Now, when you look at different markets, for example, a place market um, on horse racing, you will get maybe three or four winners, and therefore the book percentage will reflect that. For three places, it will be 300%, and for four places, it will be 400%. But there are situations that occur where the book naturally ends up above 100% on the lay side, or below 100% on the backside. 
and that's seemingly offering you free money. So what is exactly going on within those markets? So it's the Shergar Cup today at Royal Ascot. I was going to say at Royal Ascot. It's not at Royal Ascot. It's at Ascot. For some reason, Royal just slips out whenever you mention Ascot Racecourse. And I wanted to show you how to get some free money, but also uh, the catch behind that free money. Um, but we're looking at the first race at Ascot today, which goes off slightly earlier. And um, we're looking at the market, and I want to show you something unusual. If we look at the book percentages at the top here, can you see that it's at 108 on one side and 105 on the other? This is technically an overbroke book and I'll explain why in a second. But if I go into the bookmaking area, I'm going to lay with a stake of £100 and I'm going to lay everything um, on the current lay side and I'm going to place a bet. Uh, that bet has been placed and you can see that I've instantly profited. So you can see here we have five pound regardless of who goes on to win this particular race. You can see that there is free money available uh, in this particular market. And um, if we look at the next race at Ascot, you can see that's at 101.5. If we look at the quarter past two, 103. And if we look um, at 103 again, the next one is 101. You can see all of these books are over broke um, and therefore you could just lay the field and get some money. So if I wanted to go back into the uh, five past one and repeat that process again, you can see I can just do it again and again and again and this green number will rise and rise and rise. Now there is a problem with this which I'm going to explain in a second um, but first of all what I want to do is just show you what an overbroke book actually is because if I um, bring in some other markets uh, that we have uh, taking place today, I'm just slightly off screen here uh, looking for another market. So let's say for example, um, I'm looking for an early market here, red car goes off at quarter past one. You can see that the percentage is at 95%. Let's examine how that is created. So if again we look at the bookmaking screen, the favorite is taking up 23% of the market. If we add in the second favorite, it takes both of those two are making up 40% of the market, 55. And if we just keep on clicking down here, what you will see is that percentage keeps rising up here until we get to somewhere near to 100%. And these numbers here are basically saying how many winners are there going to be in the market? There's a 100% chance of a winner in the market. There's one winner in this market because it's an outright market. Lo and behold, uh, the book balances out at 100%. And that's the way that it should be. It'll be slightly more on the back side um, and slightly less on the lay side because of the spread and the difference in prices between the two sides of the book. But effectively that's how a book is created. When you look at a market, the entire market uh, and these percentages are the sum of all available odds on both sides of the market. So if we go back to Ascot again um, and have a look at the top here, you can see it's at 103%. So I mean in essence what it looks like is that you can lay the entire field and walk away with a bit of profit but not only that because of the way that Betfair works with instant settlement you could just keep on hammering away at these markets ridiculously um, and make uh, a lot of money basically however there is a flaw um, so let's explore exactly what that flaw is so when you're in the IT business there is a uh, common phrase that's used called RTFM. If you don't know what RTFM is, I apologize if you're offended easily, but go and Google the word RTFM to find out what the meaning of that is. But basically, um, the same thing applies within a trading market as well, and it catches people out left, right, and center. So we've already examined in uh, Bet Angel that one side of the book is above 100%, and that basically means if you lay the entire field above 100%, then you, you will make money uh, because the, the market is saying the chance of any one of these horses going on to win is 100% and yet you can actually sort of sell um, that chance at 103%. You will net 3% margin within the market. However, the clue to why this isn't going to work and why it's fatally flawed is if you look down here, you can see that in this particular market, um, we're looking at 
um, having some reserve runners within the market. So a reserve runner is there in case one of these other runners is unable to run and they will swap out those runners. So effectively what you're looking at here is a false market. There are two reserves in this market. There were 12 selections in this market that you can actively uh, trade or bet on. Um, but there are only going to be 10 runners. And that that is because the way that this particular, uh, I was going to say competition, right? The Shergar Cup is not like a normal horse race. Basically, you get a number of people come in from different parts of the world. They group them. It's like the Ryder Cup of horse racing, effectively. It's the rest of the world against Europe and, and so on. And as a consequence, they basically have um, fixed teams. And there are provisions there in case a runner is withdrawn. But typically, what they do to ensure that you have a full field and a fair competition is they put reserve runners in just in case one of these runners is unable to run. So if we look at the rules, your clue is within the rules of this particular market. You can see here it says, please be aware, due to reserve runners, um, exposure offset may not be available. Once the reserves are confirmed, the relevant reduction factor is applied, then the exposure offset will be available again. So basically, they're saying, if you bet into this market, it's a false market, the price that you get will not be necessarily the price that you would expect, and you also have unlimited exposure in your account. So if we go back to BetAngel, we could actually carry on. BetAngel will only do what you instruct it. It's, it's, you know, it's a very powerful tool, but basically it's completely under control. It doesn't know what you're doing or why you're doing it. And if you go into BetAngel and you continue to lay, it will let you rack up a theoretical profit. But as soon as these reserve runners are pulled, it'll turn into a loss. What I may try and do is capture an image of this a bit later so that you can see exactly uh, what impact uh, we had on this first particular race. Because if we look at BetAngel, um, we can see that there's a potential profit. But if the reserves get pulled from this market, that will turn into a loss. But what tends to happen on days like today is people see this 105%. They go in all guns blazing into the market, um, think that they made a load of money, and then the reserves get pulled. And then you've got a bit of a problem. I have covered this previously in the worst football trade ever video. If uh, It can happen in any market. Um, but basically, if you have a false market, you may be betting into something that you're unaware of. So always check the rules is the practical upshot of what I'm trying to say in this particular video. So while we've created a potential profit on BetAngel, it turns out that that potential profit is basically illusionary. And therefore, um, when the market comes to settle, it will end up settling at a loss, most likely, unless if we're very lucky. So yeah, you need to be aware of that. You need to be aware of false markets. The way that you can create exposure without looking like you're creating exposure. And I suggest that as well as understanding what's going on in this video, you should probably also check out the worst football trade ever video, which will um, reinforce this fact and show you one of the common traps that uh, people fall into. Now, of course, if you're on the other side of the book, it's happy days. So <laughs> bear that in mind when you're actively trading these sort of markets. So I hope that video has filled in a bit of knowledge for you there. It is possible for the book percentage on a betting exchange to be below 100% on the back side and above 100% on the lay side. But usually that is a reflection on something that's going on within the market. And therefore you should read the rules, understand the market, because even though it looks like there's an opportunity to be able to walk away with some free money at very little or no risk, sometimes there's a little catch or caveat there within the rules or within the market that prevents that from being the case. So whenever you see something like that occurring within the market, it's always worth checking on the rules and making sure that you understand exactly what you're doing. Because if you bet into that market to take advantage of that, you may end up on the wrong side of things. It's a situation that occurs quite regularly, and when there are reserve runners within horse racing, you'll see the situation developing as well. Uh, but hopefully that's explained why that occurs and, and what you can or should be looking for and what you should be doing when you see these situations within the market. Anyhow, I hope that video has been useful for you.